Hello everybody and welcome back to the Japanese Inspired Picnic Bench series. In today's video, I've got to get the second frame glued together and begin working on the top. Let's get going. Right, so it's the next morning and it's always a relief when epoxy dries properly. I always have this thing in the back of my mind that I've mixed it wrong and I'll come in and it'll be a big gooey mess the next morning, but it's rock solid. There was a few problems that you guys uh, predicted and I want to address them real quick. So a lot of you said about how I clamped it all on one side, meaning it may cause it to bow or something like that. We haven't actually got much of an issue this way. There is, however, a little bit of a bow along its length from those two clamps that were put on this way. It's not too much of an issue because at the moment I've just got to focus on getting the 90 degree joint and the 45 degree for the uh, support things in there. And that bow is not going to affect that whatsoever, but uh, well predicted. It definitely would have been a problem with that kind of sideways angle if the joints were loose, but come on. That's not gonna happen on this channel, is it? But before we get stuck into today's video, I want to thank today's video sponsor, which is Ridge Wallet. Now, before I show you the product, let me just show you the state of this. So if we look in my normal wallet, what have we got? We have got a feedback sheet that I gave a student back in March. A five euro note. I spent 38 euros at a place in Paris at a restaurant called <laughs> Le Corona. Subway tickets. Oh my God, there is so much stuff in there. I didn't even realize. Wait, what, the, what did I possibly buy? <laughs> I need to zoom out. Right, when's this from? The 19th of February. Like, look at the state of this. All of that in my back pocket. This is not an efficient way of life anymore. However, this is. Let me just reiterate that. Normal wallet, ridge wallet. I mean, seriously, look at how efficient this is. There's your wallet, loaded up with the cards. You've got a little thing here, you push that up, you fan out whatever you need from there, and you simply pull it out. And of course, if you still prefer to carry around cash, you've got a little cash strap on here. Just fold it into three, stuff it under the cash strap, and then voila, you can take cash on the go as well. And so you can get this in a whole host of different materials and colors. I've personally opted for the titanium black because it just, it just fits, doesn't it? But you can get these in carbon fiber, titanium, and aluminium as well. And let me tell you, the finish and the quality on this is second to none. It is such a nice product just to hold and use. It's so simple, but works so well. You even get a nice little screwdriver that comes with it. So if any of these screws need to be replaced, you can do so with the replacement screws. And on a side note, Ridge didn't even tell me to do a shout out about the little screwdriver, but look how cute this thing is. That's so cool. And so Ridge have kindly offered you guys a 10% discount if you use the link in the description. And just think about it. The world after coronavirus is gonna be very different. There's gonna be a lot less of these greasy, sweaty things handed over to one another. And things like this are gonna be the norm. So get in quick, use that 10% discount. And again, thank you very much to Ridge for sponsoring today's video. This is a quality product, I love it. Anyway, back to the video. We got a little problem. I glued it. But with any luck, let's give it a little bit of a boff. Oh no. Oh no. Ah, okay, it's going this way. Wait. Oh, the bottom's loose. That's good. That was a lot easier than I expected. Right, so before I get carried away cleaning this up and working on the top, I'm gonna get the other one in the clamps. Even though I wanna try and put it off for as long as possible, I need to get it done.
Right, there you go. Second frame in the clamps. Definitely a little bit of tilt on this one, but it seems to be the entire frame is tilted, so I'm not worried about it sort of being out of square to the foot. And even if it is, it only takes a small plane down here, flushing off the joints and slightly uh, getting that square or getting that edge back into square and it will straighten this all out. Now, obviously on the previous frame, there was that sort of slight curve along its length. And so on this one, I was careful to clamp down all the components to the bench first along the edge of the MDF along here. So I'm using that edge of the MDF as my straight edge, clamp all those down to it and then, oh, oops. And then I applied pressure with these ones that go along it uh, in order to close up the gaps. But due to the fact it was held down to the bench before tightening these, it meant it hasn't put a bow in it. Looks, eh, maybe a subtle one, but it looks okay. Okay, so while that's drying, let's begin to lay out the top. So I need six slats sort of in line with one another and then a slat either end to kind of breadboard those ends. Uh, and we're gonna pick the nice straight grain for the center and then maybe, I don't know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Some of the components didn't quite clean up as nicely as I'd hoped, so uh, we'll just have to see what we get from this. Right, so effectively what I've done here is I've picked the two cleanest boards, then the two second most clean boards, and then the third most clean boards and kind of done it so it sweeps from minging to clean to minging again. And then along it we've got thin grain, fat grain, fat grain, thin grain, thin grain, fat grain, fat grain, thin grain, thin grain, fat grain, fat grain, thin grain. And then these two bits that are separate to the batch, these don't quite match up uh, in terms of colour as the remaining six, they're a little bit paler. These are a little bit pink. So I'm gonna make these the end boards uh, and it should kind of cap it off quite nicely when they're round like that. And when I do this, I'm probably gonna have the wider grain towards the center of the table, I think. So yeah, wide and then it will taper out to thinner. And then if we look at this bit, that's pretty obvious. Let's see which is the nicest face. Oh, not that one. There you go. So that'll be how it's laid out. Right, so to mark this out, I'm thinking A, B, C, D, E, F, and then on here, this will be one and two, and then I can leave the label, then I can label each corner A1, B1, is that right? Yeah, that'll work. And then once I've done that, we will cut them to length. Right, well I accidentally left my extractor at home, so uh, I've got to cut this on the miter saw like this. Okay, so it turns out this is actually quite a big bench top. It's great. And so these ends are going to be breadboarded onto the end of the, uh, of the long bits, I don't know the terminology for it, which means we need to cut some mortises in here and some tenons on the end of the long bits. The fun thing about this, I've never cut mortises with a router before, which is what we plan on doing this with. It's gonna be an interesting process. I hope I get it right. I think I've got an idea of how to do it. Who knows? And when I went to Canada a few years ago, I got a set of these from Lee Valley. Uh, Upcuts, I think it's an Upcut. Yeah, an Upcut spiral router cutter, which I purchased for the inevitable occasion in which I do mortising with a router. And today is that day. Look at this thing. And obviously, because the width of the slats has slightly changed since my original drawing, because these were rough, so on to 150, I had to take them down to 145. I've got to slightly adjust the spacing uh, while marking out these mortises. So. I'll do that now and then touch base with you afterwards.
you meet us here in the pit <laughs> right so uh just a just an update for everyone i left my extractor at home meaning that i'm going to have to hook a different extractor up to a router that i plan on using and all of my extraction stuff is in here lovely all right <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. right. oh god, that is disgusting. That is so bad. <laughs> oh my lord. No way. That is so much dirtier in there, that's for sure. Oh god. Yeah, that's about a oh. foot and a half of water in there. Jesus. Oh. Right. I've been told to push you in. A lot of people saying didn't know you guys had a pool. I want to see how deep it is. The yeah, old dippy stick. There it is. Oh wow. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> okay, that's deeper than it was when I moved in here. Uh, okay, Paul Arthur said 20 quid if you get in it. <laughs> God, just a foot. No. 10 quid for just a shin. I'm not putting <laughs> anything in there. <laughs> Oi! Right, well that was bloody disgusting. So, I pulled out a hose from storage down here and then this hose is from the pit and we got a lovely little nozzle on the end there which will fit in my router. Nice thing about this as well is I've got variable suction. Look, if I turn this on and then I adjust this blast gate, that's not a lot of suction. I mean, look, if we look at the hose, oh, hang on. Look at the hose, that's pretty coiled up. And then you close it up. Whoa, suction. So I probably don't want to overdo it too much. And for this, I have got myself a new router, the Festool OF 1400. Look at this. Now the reason I got this is because the plunge base on my Bosch router packed in, and I've got to send it off to repair. And to be honest, I think this, it, like this is my favorite handheld router to date. The Bosch is definitely the most versatile. You can flip it between the router table and overhead very easy, but I've got the funds now. I can afford a Festool and now I can keep that Bosch one underneath the router table and this one with that and the ratchet collet on it. I love it. So this is gonna be my new overhead router. Love it. So I'm pretty much all set up for the routing now. I've got the front half of the board clamped in the vise and then the other half of it supported by the sliding dead man underneath. It's not locked sideways, but it's clamping a block down that stops this from dropping. And then I've just got two of the remainder of the top material uh, behind it as support. As for the router itself, I'm going for a 50 millimeter depth. So let's just drop that down to hit the material, drop this down to the lowest stop and then raise it up to 50 millimeters. I'm assuming it will get all the way down there. Yes, lovely. Damn, let's cut in deep. And then I'll probably just use the turret system to do it in different steps. So we'll do this one first, maybe. Oh, that's gonna be a bit of a, bit of a big cut to start with. So I'll probably do one in between them and then we'll work on the turret. So we'll go to there and then use that one and then go to our final depth stop afterwards. And in terms of stopping in time for either of these lines, I'm probably just gonna eyeball it, to be honest. Uh, this area here that isn't scribbled out is where the shoulder of the slat is gonna be. So slat's gonna be that full width and then the shoulders of the tenon and then that's actually gonna be the mortise itself. So if it does overstep it slightly, I've got this entire 30 millimeter buffer to stop in time. And so without further ado, this is the first time I'm mortising with a router and the first time I'm using a spiral cutter. Wish me luck. Oh, and the first time I'm using this janky extraction setup as well. <laughs> I almost created a fire there. Yeah, it was spinning a bit too fast. It is actually embering. Oh no. All right. So I've got to be careful here because that was a little bit burny and I'm worried about it extracting up hot chips. Only thing is, if you open it, yeah. you give it oxygen. Oh, of course you do. And if you turn on the extraction, you give it more oxygen. Oh. <laughs> it's a win -win for the fire. It should be okay, but there was an ember that just landed on the floor that actually, like... Right, so... Um, We've got Rob here now. <laughs> Just there's another pair of hands in case things go wrong. Um, let's turn this down to literally halfway. Thing is, it is a spiral cutter, so it shouldn't need a lot of speed to cut. It should be a nice sheer cut, in Good. theory. All right.
Oh, damn it, I went to the wrong line. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, what a pillock. Oh, that's, that's my fault for drawing too many bloody lines on it. Oh. Oh, once, was it? Bam! I mean, it's not an advantage, but <laughs> <laughs> the only bit that will be exposed is that, and I'll plug that with something. <gasps> ah! I'm so worried about setting the workshop on fire that I forgot about to focus on the lines. For <laughs> sake! <sighs> Extraction, you idiot! Oh yeah! <laughs> The student has become the master. Yawn. Shut up. No, you're not. I'm so happy. I'm not. <laughs> no, I, I thought I didn't need it then, actually. I just thought I'd, <laughs> you know, just like, just thought I'd hold my breath. <laughs> Yeah, oh. Whoa. You only f a little bit, but nice. What do you mean? Well, it's a nice little curve there, nice little curve there. Shut up, Rob. <laughs> Maybe I want to do curved tenants for structure. I'm going to give you a C minus. Are you? Yeah. Well, for my first time, I will take that. Hello. <laughs> There's no one here yet. Oh, okay. That's fine. You know, I put it on Instagram story, uh, TV before and then people can watch back on my mistakes and coops. Spot the error. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, right. So, today's <laughs> task is, well, I'll say today's task, basically, well, I have to extract from the router into this extractor here, but it's an absolute pain to get this Jubilee click off and back on. So, what we thought is connecting this hose to that hose and then turning that chip extractor on and sucking everything out of here so I don't have to clean it. Oh, I see you're not, you're not going to move this extractor at all. You're literally going to try and keep it there in that yes. position. Wow. Okay. The only thing I'm worried about is pulling the filters the opposite direction. I can't imagine it's going to, um, like, I, I don't see how it could do any damage. It's just the fact it's pulling the filters in the other direction that might cause some issues. Also, if this does go well, don't try it yourself. Just a little disclaimer for you there. Um, obviously, all the blast gates. So, like, we've got suction coming out of this, and obviously you need a way for air to come into it to get suction out. So, this is going to be the in-shoot to allow air in and we've obviously got the blast gates open up there oh, and open that one as well so we can get plenty of air flow through here out here and then up uh, Tim Scott says uh, are you about to bodge an extractor no I think you might be no no you're definitely gonna bodge an extractor no I'm not it's fine mate so air flow through there through the extractor therefore going up through here when I open this gate it should suck everything out that extractor, meaning I don't have to empty it. Okay. I'm so scared. Oh, we're going a little bit. Let's get away. Let me close these gates. Ready? Yeah. Oh, I can oh, hear it. Beautiful. Oh, it's going down here. That. Oh, it's going down here as well. Oh, oh. I can't see it. It's it's really trailing through. Oh yeah. That's incredible. It's working. That's brilliant. So from all from there, all the way around the back, up, around. Should we see if it's uh, see if it's empty? Down. Yeah. It's not coming through now, is it? No. It's not going to empty it. I mean, that's how it gets hot, look. Oh, I forgot there's one more. 
Oh, oh not oh, bad. I mean, look at that. Not bad at all. That was, I just felt in here, that was like up to there. Yeah. Something. Oh, a bit dusty though. Should probably shut that off. Damn. Ooh. So, so don't try that yourself because I don't know if that was something safe to do. So, you see what I mean? That sucking that bag down. I was right. worried about it pulling that out. Oh, and, and just go through the Straight tube. out. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's got quite a few layers of clampage. It does, yeah. But you never know. Look at that. Brilliant. So what's that? 100 divided by 12 equals 8.3. And so minus 8.3 from 100. And that equals... So this process was about 91.7% successful. 11 of the holes turned out beautifully. The 12th one I accidentally routed a little bit too far because I just wasn't looking at the lines correctly. Stop it! Leave me alone. So, 91.7% success, successful. I think that was a pretty good attempt for my first time. And after the, most of the success of that, I'm kind of in a mood of trying other processes that I haven't tried before. And so the other process I want to try is the rebating function on this, because you can set a stop to stop it from cutting all the way through. And I think this would be a really good way to cut the tenons on the end of these slats without the risk of that chipping and splitting that I experienced when I did it by hand. Should be fun to try this because I've always wanted to. But I think we're going to save that for next week's episode because one accident today is enough. But before I do that, I've got to clean up some of this epoxy. Ah, oh, bum. And it's getting late. I'm very liable to make another one if I keep pushing on. So as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do not forget to press the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to use the 10% off link for the Ridge wallets in the description of this video. We'll see you in the next one.